Can you pasteurize mead and wine with the sous vide method? A lot of people have asked, and today we're going to do it. So the short answer is yes. The long answer is with some caveats. There's a lot of things you want to know, and we're going to give you all those little guidelines. So let's get started. First, you need to have things to pasteurize. We have here an assortment of bottles, different sizes. Some are screw caps, some are swing tops. This one's just a wine bottle that we did the adapter cap thing for the swing top to. No problem. I want to show you how you can actually do all of those. You can do more than just four, by the way. We just chose four at random. They don't really even need to be pasteurized. We're just doing this to show you guys. You also need one bottle that is only filled with water and does not have a cap on it. That's super critical. You're also going to need a vessel. Now, what vessel should you choose? Well, that depends greatly on what you're trying to pasteurize. You want to be able to cover at least three quarters of the bottle. Ideally, you want to cover to the where the liquid point is in the vessel. So you can see most of these should work. This one is just barely there, but three quarters, really around the curve of that bottle is the bare minimum that you want to be able to cover them. So I'm just going to start putting these in. Oh, you also need one of these guys, which is an immersion circulator not a sous vide. It's actually not a, called a sous vide. It's called an immersion circulator. It is the sous vide method. Now, these are great for doing this, I think, better than doing it on a stove because A, you have better temperature control, and B, as an immersion circulator, it'll do it faster, meaning it doesn't just heat the water, it circulates it. And as we know from like convection ovens and things like that, when you move the air or water around, it can heat things up or cool things off much more quickly. So let me just attach this to our pot here. Just give this a turn like that. If you don't have one of these, um, this one is supposed to be a good one. And her brother got this for me for Christmas. I've never actually used it before. So Colby, thank you. And I'm sorry at the same time. Um, once we started not eating meat, it became less, less critical. But for this purpose, I think this might be a whole reason to have one of these. Now this is the Innova Nano, which means it connects to my cell phone and I can set everything there and I can time it so I can be in the office and know what it's doing and all that, which is really neat. I didn't think it was necessary, but it's actually kind of neat. So let me just plug this in. I'll be right back. There we go. It makes noises. And let me just get the app going. So regardless of what type of device you're using, you want to make sure you're familiar with it and know what its limitations are. So for our particular device, we have a minimum and a maximum line for the liquid that we'll be putting in there. So we haven't yet reached our minimum. I did cheat and put some water in here, but I didn't know exactly how much water I needed based on the displacement of the bottles that are going in here. So now. It already told me low water. I was going to start getting the water preheated. And these things are smart, okay? Yeah. There's a, ma a min and a max. So you want to make sure you're there. What I do want to do, though, is get my bottles in before we start adding more water so that we see how much water they're going to displace because they will. Now, this happens to have a like a concave bottom. So they don't sit real nicely in it. But it was the biggest pot we have for doing this in. So it's the one we're going to use. It also might have a slightly irregularly concave bottom due to cats knocking it over multiple times. Oh, it's dented? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a dent right there. Right in the middle. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That makes life so much easier when stuff's all dented and banged up. We, we really only bought this exact pot to make beer in, and I think I've done it like twice. I just really don't, don't use it for that anymore. Okay, so let's pour some water in. Uh, right now, the water level's to about here. So it's not even, it's just a little over halfway. So we're just gonna pour more water in. You're gonna probably use all of that and then some. Yeah, I just don't wanna crash mm -hmm. everything because they're... But they're, they're precarious, precarious because Precarious. Oh, wow. All right, I that... passed the minimum line. I think we're good. So let's let's see this. So Where's the minimum line? It's there oh, yeah. We're, we're beyond the minimum line. We are about to hear now on our Actually, vessel. So as you can see, it's mostly full. It's not completely full. We do still have a little bit sticking out there. But we're above the minimum line, below the maximum line on the actual immersion circulator. So I think we'll just add a little bit more water to get it just a little bit higher. All right, so we're just going to pour more water in. We don't want to overflow but at the same time we don't want too much underexposed so go ahead and go ahead and pour that in oh, i didn't want to make noise while you were talking oh you can pour very quietly too look at that see it's silent okay right about there Duff pour. it's about a half inch from the top now but 
nearly every bottle, wherever there's liquid, is pretty much submerged. And you know what? I'm just going to move our tester bottle to the side because it was worrying me a little bit. So now they're just surrounding the edge. Now, the tester bottle is really important because getting the water in here to the proper temperature is one thing, but you want the water, the liquid, the brew, inside the bottles to be at that temperature. And that's the key. I've heard a lot of people that did this and literally somebody said, I got it up to 140 degrees and then shut everything off and then took the bottles out. Okay, well, guess what? Your bottles were probably not at 140 degrees. The water was, but I don't think the insides of those bottles were. And you want to keep it there for 20 minutes because here's the thing. Yeast start to die off at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I'll put a Celsius here too. At 140 degrees Fahrenheit, they cannot live anymore. But you want to be sure there's none in there. So 20 minutes at 140 degrees pasteurizes for our purposes. Now, I know milk and things like that are pasteurized at far higher temperatures. They do that on purpose because you can kill off more things at higher temperatures and with lower time, it's faster, so it's more economical. For our purposes, we only need to kill off the yeast. We don't need to kill off every single thing in there, but killing off the yeast pretty much stops 99.9% .9 of the problems you might have. And it's a safe enough number that doesn't alter the flavor of the brew, but low enough that we don't explode bottles. Okay. That's key because some of these could be under pressure. If you're using pressurized carbonated brews, you definitely don't want to be raising that temperature too high because it's already under pressure. Now you're going to add heat as more pressure. Boom. Not a good idea. So let me get this going and I'll talk some more. I have a question that our viewers might want to know as well. And that's the placement of the tester bottle. Would we want the tester bottle right next to the device? Or would we want it opposite the device. I don't think it actually matters, but that's a fair point. Okay. So I'll just move it to the furthest point. That way we know if that's 140 degrees, everything is. Okay. That's the whole point in a circulator. The water so nearest to the circulator is not necessarily any hotter than anything else because it's all moving all the time. It creates its own little whirlpool like thing. So I don't think that's as much of an issue. If you're doing it on a stove, absolutely you want to make sure that the closest to the, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, what is the temperature that I set this to? 140 degrees. Now I set the timer to 60 minutes, though I don't really think it's gonna be 60 minutes. I think it's gonna be less than that. But how will I know? Well, you need one of these, a probe thermometer. An instant read is best, but if you don't have an instant read, that's okay. If you have a candy thermometer, you can just leave it sitting in here and that's great. I'm just going to take a temperature reading of the inside of that bottle and it's already reading 93 degrees. The outside is reading 99 oh no 100 degrees so you see there's already a difference now we used warm water to start with um not necessarily in the tester bottle but i guess it's already heating up um it is actually probably like 80 degrees in our house today anyway so you know there's part of it we turned the bucket because our microphone's right here and this makes a little bit of a humming sound so if you hear that hum i apologize that's not really a problem with our audio it's actually the sound that the um, immersion circulator makes so at this point, all you can really do is sit and wait. So what's going to happen is the water in here is going to get to 140 degrees, and then the liquids inside these bottles should get to 140 degrees. But it'll get there after the circulator thinks it's at 140 degrees. Same as if you're making a steak. If you were going to sous vide a steak, the steak is not ready when the water gets to that temperature. It's not automatically at the temperature of the water. It, ha it takes a while to get there. That's the same concept here, okay? But that is the benefit for using the sous vide uh, method because it'll get to that temperature and then it'll maintain that temperature, right? Yes. It's going up a little bit, went up like one degree. Let's see what this is now. Yeah, 95.7. So this is about five to six degrees behind the main water in the bucket, which doesn't sound so bad, but if that distance keeps changing, meaning these heats more slowly than the water does, now we have a problem where the bottles won't be pasteurized if we stopped right when the water got to 140. Okay, makes sense? Some other people have told me that they got the water to 140, waited 20 minutes, and then turned everything off. Still, I don't think that's right, but it's closer. Might have taken 20 more minutes for that those bottles to reach that 140 degree temperature. So you just got them there and then you shut it off. Mm -mm. It takes a little time. Be patient. This is still brewing. So, you know, time heals all brews. Well, in this case, 
you need that time to still make this work properly. Okay, so it's been an hour and nine minutes <laughs> and the water hit 140 about nine minutes ago. All right, the Innova is saying, yep, it's good to go. But our bottle of water is at, just use my quick read thermometer here that isn't all that quick apparently at this point. 139.5 okay it's really really close to 140 it's not quite there yet i think precision is important now because i think precision is important something of note the anova says the water is 140 degrees this says the water is 141.1 and it doesn't matter where i put it over on that side over here it's 141.1 so that makes me think if the anova would be the more precision instrument than my 15 dollars amazon probe thermometer this is actually past the 140. So what I'm going to do is set my timer for 20 minutes. And I have a new idea on how you can make this even simpler, but it does take doing it one time this way. What I mean by that is I had to babysit this, okay? I didn't have to babysit it for the full hour, but you know, it was convenient. I sat here and played on my cell phone while I laid it, no big deal. I actually answered some comments and questions on the channel. But... The reason why you want to babysit it is because you want to understand the ratio between how many bottles, what size bottles, what size of container, how much water, and the particular sous vide operation device you're using and how they all work together. That. So Brian was taking temperatures of the water and comparing it with the reading of the meter at different timed variables and he noticed that the relationship was... Generally speaking, my probe thermometer was about 1.1 degrees higher than what the ANOVA said the temperature was, which that proved itself out right at the end where it was literally 1.1 degrees. The water bottle tended to be anywhere from three to five degrees cooler than the Innova at any given point. In the beginning, it seemed like it was catching up and the, the gap was getting smaller, but I don't think it was that at all. I think it just literally doesn't heat up at the same temperature because there's glass and things like that. Now, you will not actually know exactly how yours will work because if you put more bottles in, it's gonna take a lot longer for those to heat up relative to the other water. But if I was to reproduce this scenario again, where I'm only putting four bottles in this exact pot using this product, I know I can just set the ANOVA to like 145 degrees, 20 minutes, and I can leave. I can go out and come back hours later and it'll be fine. If I put more bottles in and I test it that way, then I know how many bottles I can put in and what to do and what temperature adjustment to make. Does that make sense? Because if I know these are three to five degrees behind that all the time, by the time this would get to 145, I know these are at 140 at least, and then 20 minutes later, all good to go. So that's the way these immersion heaters work and it's wonderful. But if I was to put a lot more bottles in here, I have a feeling the differential would be much higher. So you have to test that for yourself and make like a typical setup basically. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let these go for 20 minutes because 20 minutes is the number once it reaches 140 degrees internal temperature and then let it come to room temperature and put your bottles away. That's it. We're not going to show you because what do you need to see? Like 20 minutes passes and they need to cool down? I mean, how, how would you know? So we're not going to worry about it. But if you like this video, look up. There's another one up there. You might like that video too.